simple man making his way through the galaxy. What's up, Star Wars fans, and welcome back to another review here on Carbonite Combos. If this is your first time joining us, you've just taken your first step into a larger world. And if you've been with us before, we can't thank you enough for coming back. <sighs> wow. Alec and I just finished the series finale, the season one finale of Book of Boba Fett, and I don't even know where to begin. We're going to try not to disappoint. Not at all. We're going to try to keep this short because tomorrow we're recording episode 61 of the podcast for Star Wars Podcast Day. Um, so, you know, we're, we're happy to, we're very glad to be included in such an awesome event once again. So we'll give more of a lengthy video tomorrow, but we wanted to hop on here and just talk about our immediate responses to the season finale. Alec, what are your, what are your first thoughts? Dude, right out of the shoot. I want to say this episode did a incredible job at keeping the balance of expecting things to happen without them being too cliche, where it would lead up to things where, you know, example, like we figured Grogu was going to do something. Oh, we figured Boba was going to do some something with his staff to end up beating Cad Bane. And obviously that ended up happening. I didn't but, figure that. <laughs> but or how using it in some capacity, whatever it was. It ended up happening in a way where I was still surprised that it happened, even though it was in a way predictable. So I think that goes to show the the quality of the story as a whole, all kind of wrapped up and, and presented to you. Do you know what I mean? I 100% think that was a great way to describe it. And to go off of that, I think a lot of people, even after all the cameos from last week and weeks prior, I think people, based on rumors and leaks, were still expecting more people to show up. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was kind of expecting to see them too, but I'm not disappointed that they didn't show up. Same. I think that they did a great job at meeting the expectations without meeting them in the exact ways that you thought, because last week they met them in the form of bringing Luke Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano, Grogu, Order 66 flashbacks. They did things that the fans have specifically asked for. And this week, I think a lot of people expected Dengar, Bosk, uh, Han Solo, possibly Chewie, Luke, and you know, going into the episode, I kind of expected to see one of them um, or anticipated seeing one or some of them. But after seeing it, I'm completely fine that they didn't show up because like you said, they they wrapped it up very nicely. And it goes to show what the story did itself instead of the instead of the cameos. Yeah, no, exactly. And I feel like it's hard to live up to level of hype after last week because literally like just uh, this Ahsoka and Luke alone being in an episode is all time level Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. And for them to have the season finale the following week and not include two of those characters, like th those two huge characters and for it to still be one quality two insanely hype. I love it because it, brought the focus back onto Boba and what his story is about, what his mission about and his, his old age. And as Cad Bane called it, his softness, which we end up finding out is not very soft whatsoever. So no. I was really happy with it, man. I think they did a great job balancing those two aspects and I couldn't be happier, man. I, I thought it was great. Start to finish. I thought the series was fantastic. I, I did too, man. And it started off slow. I'm really not going to lie. Yes, it did start off slow, but it's okay. It's okay mm -hmm. to have to build that story. Um, one thing I am surprised about is that we didn't see the, the female Tuscan Raider again. I expected to see her. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do I think that she might pop up in the future? Maybe, but I, I kind of, I expected to see her again because we didn't see her body. Um, but sorry, that was kind of a side thought that just came to mind because I've almost at the point we're at now, I had to look back and remember, holy crap, the first four episodes, we half of them were flashbacks. And then I was thinking about that story. I was like, oh, wow, we haven't seen her in a while. Um, but e either way, the story start to finish. Yes, it started out slow, but I feel like that's how a lot of shows 
have to start. You're not going to get just a very hot opening for every series. That's not how it's, it's not how it's going to be, but you know, star Wars fans are spoiled and I think they expect top tier. And I think this was top tier, but if it doesn't meet their expectations, they are disappointed by it. Me personally. Yes. Slow start, but you just got to be patient. You have to let the story build. And they did just that. They, they built the story of how Boba got out of the Sarlacc, what he was doing in the time between uh, that and then meeting. And the years that pass Mando. up until, yes. right. Until he runs into Mando and gets his armor back. And now we're at the point, like we talked about on the podcast a few weeks ago, I think it's going to be one of those situations where the shows are kind are very fluid with each other. Um, so I couldn't be more excited just for the level of hypeness of this episode. I couldn't be more excited just how this series ended, but also the future of Star Wars because no. the story's not over. There's still so much left to be told. No, absolutely. And I would definitely say that this was worth the wait, the, the, the slow first couple episodes, the years and years that passed for fans to wait out, wait to find out what really happened to Boba after uh, return of the Jedi. Yeah. Right. So we have all this time pass and it builds up until one of the coolest star Wars moments we've ever seen is Boba Fett comes in riding a Rancor. That's that's top, top five. Dude, top five that, moments. That's insane. That, that might go down as one of the coolest just memories in Star Wars. We're going to get a lot of art. Of oh, that. I can't wait. I can't wait. We're going to get oh, we're going to get toys too, baby. Ooh, I can't wait to buy those. But man, that was something I wasn't lying on the reaction and if you haven't checked out the reaction, make sure to go do that because oh, we reacted hard. You can check the link out in the bio. Yes. I wasn't lying when I said that is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. That would, I I can't even put it into words because up until now, I always pictured Rancors as very slow creatures and very brutal creatures. But this show, kind of like how Star Wars has done with a lot of other species as well, it's flesh them out in a new light and to see them jumping to see this rancor jumping from roof to roof being ridden by one of the most iconic characters in star wars i i just am completely satisfied and that like i said that was one of all one of the most one of the coolest things i've ever seen all time not just in star wars (laughs) Yeah, man. Every like you said, start to finish, it was just great. Cad Bane had to be one of the coolest villains ever. Like he still is. It's insane. How about Grogu, man? I cannot believe we got the answer to his, we got an answer of what he picked. We did get an answer. We got an answer. But- well, we don't know if he has the saber or not. There's mm-hmm. always a chance because we didn't see him not take it. So it's a chance yeah. that he took it. It's just. I have a hard time believing that in season two of the Mandalorian, they bring Luke Skywalker in, in that dramatic fashion to take arguably one of the saving graces of star Wars to take him away from Mando and then just give him back within within six, seven new episodes of live action star Wars. I have a hard time believing that that's the last we'll see of that story. Um, so I don't know. I, I think that's the bigger question now is what's that dynamic? Um, well, I know Din wants Grogu to train. He wants him to. Yeah. And so I think he's gonna put the pressure on him to say, no, go back, like do your thing. Maybe Luke will let him stay. Who knows? Um, yeah, I worry, man. I worry about like the arrogance and those dogmatic views that they've talked, talked about being passed on to luke um i don't know there's just so much potential with grogu and luke as we've seen in just a a, couple handful of moments yeah exactly so uh, i i don't know there's there's so much to be told still so i have a hard time believing that you know that story's over yeah i also think 
that's how they get us to wait for Mando season three. Mm-hmm. No, especially after this, after this after this episode, dude, we are showing the true potential of Grogu. Not that he didn't have any before, but the fact he was able to put a rancor to sleep, calm it down, a huge beast like that, and you're this big, right? <laughs> and to go and snuggle up with it after is, know. you know, just for for a cuteness factor. But you know, it's there. The talent is there, and the the midichlorians, I'm sure, are extremely high with this one. So the roof. it's it's a wasted opportunity if something does not develop with that. Oh, dude, there's no way no. nothing will develop, man. Like, yeah, there's no way they hit the. They have a pot of gold with Grogu, and they are not giving that up anytime soon. Um, but episode, let's talk. Let's talk strictly about this episode. Um, did you have any any other thoughts about just the war, the the growing tension? I want to talk about Fennec. Let's do it. Fennec is awesome. She is badass, and she is a cold-blooded well, killer, I mean, man. The, the post credit scene was her just going in, assassin, secret well, no, ninja that, mode. That wasn't post credit post credit oh, was the no, you're right, you're right. The post credit was Cobb The man. last scene. Yeah, you're right. Um, she just wipes out the pipe. But she just goes in and just grabs a dude by the neck and just... Hangs the mayor. I wonder if that might come back to bite them at all. Maybe. I don't know if it will, but I, I kind of see. Oh, I, don't have, know I have a feeling. I have a feeling that she wasn't supposed to do that. Yeah, I know. That Bobo, because I'm sure Bobo wanted to take down the pikes. Well, I. Unless, I unless he sent her, but I feel, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. There's something about her and it's not a distrust. It's a power thing. Dude, I have been, I said this at the beginning of the series, but I asked you a question. I asked like, do you see, is there anything in you that believes that she might turn on Boba? And you're like, no, not at all. And it's not that I think she's going to turn on Boba. Um, Just have different views and they're both very strong in those views. Exactly. Um, But they're very cohesive. They work very well together. So as long as that dynamic the power and leadership dynamic stays the same like she can respect that boba is the leader i think everything's going to be fine but yeah i don't know i wouldn't say so much with the pikes but i don't know if he would have been terribly happy with her hanging the mayor like that i feel like that might have been a bit of a stretch um because i would have wanted to talk with him (laughs) like i would have i don't know i i feel like there was a conversation to be had between the mayor and Boba. Um, yeah, so some of the top moments, Grogu putting the Rancor to sleep, the Rancor in general, Boba coming in riding the, the Rancor, the showdown between Boba Fett and Cad Bane. The first one, we see Fennec talk that's, him out of it. That's top tier Star Wars. Yes, that's something that fans have wanted for a long time too. We were able to see Fennec talk him out of the first one because she was right. We're going to fight him on our terms. And he was just baiting him. And then we see the legendary showdown. And I like that they address their past where Cad Bane has trained Boba a little bit. um, And he has beat him out on jobs in the past. So to see them go one-on-one old Western style Cad Bane win initially, I was honestly really worried because I look at the title of the episode and what was it? Um, For for Honor. honor. Something something for Honor. I was like, automatically, automatic. Have you seen that video? Uh Uh-uh. Okay. (laughs) I'll show it to you later. Automatic. Um, Automatically, right when I saw that title, I was just wondering, okay, who's going to die? Because with that kind of title, I figured someone would sacrifice himself. So when I saw Boba on the ground like that, I was honestly a little worried about, about that, about the show ending, not in a dissatisfactory way, but something to keep it going to next season with, you know, uh, seemingly Boba and the crew winning. And then at the very end, Cad coming in, shutting it down and us having to wait with broken hearts until the next season. Right. Uh, But we didn't see that. And him pulling out the gaffy stick, 
was incredible. Well, I thought that I thought that was good foreshadowing because right before that, Cad Bane said, "I'm still faster than you," oh, and yeah. Boba well, says, said, "I know." He too. says, "I know," and then he said, "Whatever." But then Boba ends up being faster than him when he goes to grab the stick. Yep, and just whoop, flips him. I didn't expect him to kill him. I didn't either. It was dope. Yeah. That was incredible. Just see. And dude, I, I, Cad Bane's a ruthless and brutal character, but people are drawn to those characters too, because they're interesting. They're just awesome to say the least, you know? So Cad Bane's an awesome character. So at, on one side where I'm really sad, I, I am sad that, you know, the character's gone. Not that they can't do anything with them in the future. Um, in, you know, in between the areas where we've seen them. Well, we're probably going to see him in Bad Batch season yeah. two. So. so I am sad that he's, that we saw him die on one hand. But the way we saw him die, I mean, I was, I was cheering. Like I was blown away screaming. I was completely enthralled. I'm, I'm here for it. I, I thought that was kind of a poetic end to Cad Bane's character. I'm with you. Um, what else? How about the people of Freetown? I was really excited to see them show up. Yeah, man. It, it would have been done. I like, I like Din's, was it Din's words to him? It's like, you guys don't have to be here. You don't have to do this. And yeah. the bartender says something along the lines of, yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. Like this is our, this is our duty. And it was the same way when they reacted and they had to go kill the Kate, the crate dragon. They bucked up. Went and exactly. went and did it, and it was two times where you're you're meshing two groups of people that don't get along. Because the first time it was the Tuscans and it was the people of Freetown, um, which they didn't get along at all. And then you can tell there's a little disdain between the people of Freetown and quote city folk. So and Boba says save it for the Pikes, which which is awesome. Yes, this is not a time to be debating who's better or just fleshing out any of your past issues. Like right now there are bigger things at hand, but it's interesting. The both times that we've seen Freetown help, it was with someone that they weren't the biggest fans of. So it just kind of thing. It just goes to show you the will of like the human spirit and how you can over overlook differences when there's something darker and just worse at hand. Very well put. Thank you. You could put that on. You could put that on one of those posters that go in the, go in an office. Like <laughs> hang in there. Yeah. The motivational um, posters. Yeah. Perseverance. Yeah. Um. It, what What else do you have? Because man, this episode is so so hard to. I it, was a little disappointed that R two and R five didn't. Yes, mingle. that was a good point. That was a great. Just point. something. I just wondered, like look at each other and and then yes, it, it could have been that simple. When you said it, I was actually mad at myself for not thinking of it too, because dude, they have a very interesting relationship. And if if you consider the book from a certain point of view canon, which I do, Star Wars does, but a lot of people online don't, but IDGAF, what trolls think, there is a very interesting dynamic between R5 and R2. And when you said that, it was like a light bulb went off in my head. I, I was, I was like, holy, holy crap, Alex, you're exactly right. They're, this is, this might be the first time they've seen each other since I know they passed each other briefly in attack of the clones. Um, but it was one of those blink and you miss it kind of deals, but for them to be there with each other, I wonder if it almost escaped their minds too the creators. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they almost didn't realize it because I was mad at myself for not realizing it. I was like, dang, Nick, like I love R5. R2 is my favorite character. So I was like, dang, I didn't even realize that. So I wonder if there's a possibility that the creators just didn't just kind of went over their head. Yeah. Just didn't put two and two together it could have with everything else that's happening. That's, and you know, we're just being nitpicky, like exactly it's not, not a big deal. Like no, but we, we still got everything we wanted. I feel like that would have been one of those moments that longtime Star Wars fans would really 
cherish because mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to say I'm not one of those who's like, oh, if you started like in Mandalorian, you're not a Star Wars fan. You didn't. It's man, if you like any Star Wars, I consider you a Star Wars fan, but they just might not know the deeper connection yet. If because I didn't start like liking, like really liking R5 until like a year and a half ago when I read the book, and I doubt a lot of people have read the book. So if you don't really know that dynamic on a deep level, it wouldn't really mean a lot. Um, but I feel like that would have been something for very long time fans that have known their dynamic for a long time it would have been a cool uh i don't know just a cool little nod to their past so i do think that was a little bit of a missed opportunity like you said but either way we're being nitpicky yeah man i i'm i completely agree i i loved it start to finish and i have you know it's not it's not a complaint just complaint just something we would like to see um i still think it was damn near perfection I know that was so, Book of Boba Fett, top tier Star good. Wars checklist. Good show. Good show. Mm. Um, but do you have anything else? I know we still have. We're, we're going to talk about this for an tomorrow, hour. I'm tomorrow sure. Night, yeah. So, um, yeah. Why don't we call it here, guys? Thank you so much for joining us throughout the entire series. This was awesome. Start to finish. Um, you know, we knew that it would end in an awesome way. And like we mentioned for the past 20 minutes, it did not disappoint. So thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure to check out our reaction if you haven't already. And on Thursday, uh, expect episode 61 of the Carbonite Combos podcast, which is being made for Star Wars podcast day. So very happy to be, uh, you know, very happy to be involved in that once again for the second year in a row. Uh, last ad of the video, I promise. Make sure to come back on Friday for our next Funko Pop list from uh, Ant Man. So we moved on from Spider Man No Way Home. You can check out that list as well. 50 plus pops. And Friday, we are moving on to Ant Man and then moving into Star Wars. Um, so a lot of a lot of awesome things. And you can also expect a Book of Boba Fett episode uh, Book in of the Boba near Fett. future. No, that's next week. That's the next. We're going back to that. That's right. Yep. We already have the creators working on working on pops. They've done an awesome job so far. Um, so we might have to have a little chat with them after this episode and see what they can do. Um, but expect Ant Man this week, and if everything goes right, Book of Boba next week. So we can't thank you again for joining. And until next time, guys, may the force be with you. I'm a simple man making his way through the galaxy. 